This is just a really pretty glass. It's a Kokomo, so it cuts real easy. It's very well annealed. You know, I mean, it's just a... So that's the textured side, which will be up and down in the window. And then, of course, you can see the other side, too. So let's see what... Let's see what the rest of this color looks like. The rest of this sheet looks like. So this sheet of glass has been in the warehouse for 21 years, <laughs> which I think is really funny. Um, here's another piece of it right here. And you know these uh, cat's paw sheets really aren't that large either. They're only like five and a half square feet. But you know what? It's going to be enough that we have so that we have enough of this glass to go in these last four windows in the oak tree project because it's kind of a it's the glass that I've been using probably the most of and so we got those pieces we got one more piece here four beautiful pieces of glass and now this glass here this is also for the oak tree project I'm gonna put this maybe we can get a little bit of light through it maybe how about over here bar like this maybe like that. looks different like I tell you all the time the back, okay, is much different than the front. Hi everybody, we're back in the stained glass studio now and we're working on this window, the oak tree project. So uh, this, is the, this is the back side of it. So I've had to, uh, it's been, you know, it took me a few days to build this thing so the lead has oxidized some of it. The 3 8 lead was oxidized in the box because we've had it for quite a while. But anyway, what I'm going to do, I've got this little handheld drill and I've got a, a wire brush on the end of it. And I'm... So, I've got my flux. This is my ruby flux. And I want you to see that when you're looking right here and your solder joint comes in let's pick this one right here your solder joint comes in and it makes a T just like that well y'all when you when you solder that joint your solder okay should look if it's a Y then you, you your solder joint should look like a Y and it should flow you want that Y look so we're gonna take this one right here this is a T I've got my wattage controller and this is my my little iron here so we're gonna take this you can hear our flux so what we want to do now that my iron is a little bit hot so we're gonna cool it down a little bit and we're gonna come back And I like to do what I call a touch and go. So if I get the temperature right on my iron here, what we want it to do. So we want to go one, two, straight up. One, two, straight up. So you want that solder joint to look like a V because that's what it is. One, two, pick straight up. Touch and go, everybody. One, two. Now you have all these joints that come together, so you don't, you need your iron hot. And you want to make sure. Touch and go. Touch and go. A little bit of flux. We want this to be at a Y. Now sometimes you get a little bit that'll run off, but if you if you pick it straight up, you'll make it just exactly the way it needs to be. 
See that? Touch and go. One, two, straight up. One, two, straight up. So this three-eighths lid, it's kind of like zinc a little bit because it's so big, it has to be really hot. And we want to do straight down and straight up. We want to be able to Just like that. This one here, see it's coming in like this. We're gonna let our arm heat up. One, two, drag it, boom, put it in there in that wash, just like <clears throat> just like you cut the lead. These two are little just little T's, so you just hold it down, one, two, straight up. One, two, straight up. Okay. Same way here. One, two, straight up. Hi everybody, it's Ed. We're here in the stained glass studio and today we've started another uh, set of two windows for the Live Oak project. And we are also, so we're stripping out the colors okay so now and we're up near the top area right in here in this arch so we're right up here where either one of my, my left and right hand are so you can see where the hole is right there so this is up in the top so it's going to be a little bit lighter up there rather than darker so these this is the this is the black and yellow and orange that I that you know we've been talking about throughout the whole project and we've been using this end of it okay in the rest of the windows but now we're up here near the top so we're gonna we're gonna strip this out and it's exactly what I've been doing and this will give me uh, I need four more strips about four inches and this will give me just exactly what I need so I'm just gonna take my glass cutter it's this has a you can see the factory edge here now these are beautiful and if you have glass with a factory edge on it like that that's really nice and uh, I don't know it's just really gorgeous the way that edge is but and it's not sharp and you can make box lids out of it and uh, your customers will probably like it because it's so unusual and you're you're just using part another part of the glass that some people aren't going to be able to use or don't think about using it so we're going to take this and because we're up near the top now we're going to use the brighter end of this glass and i really only need about a three and a half inch strip and we're just gonna we're gonna pop that off and so this is the strip that I've stripped for, for window number H, okay? So, and now we have at least three more strips for three more windows. So the next window, which is the window beside that, we need another strip. Of the same glass now I want to show you something really interesting this is the shiny side of the glass okay this is the shiny side take a look at this side y'all this is the side that you're gonna see in the stained glass window in on the inside of the window um, you can see it's textured it's almost uh, like a cat's paw kind of thing going on with it but you're gonna see a lot of this side of this piece of glass in the rest of these four windows and it's in the other windows too it's just how you see it because when the lights behind it you don't know whether it's up or down okay however 
during twilight, which is when glass, I think, is its truest color. And that's just my opinion. But during twilight, you're going to be able to tell the front or the back of this glass and every other glass that I'm flipping up or flipping over within this project. So there's our two more strips, guys and gals, for the other windows. So I'm just going to set this right here. And now we're going to come over to our next color. This is another beautiful glass. And I'm going to show you I'm going to show you the texture on this before we strip it out. Now I want you to, those of you who have asked, um, you know, how do you do your, your textures? How do you cut your textures? This glass is a little tricky and yet it's probably not going to break correctly for me either. And, uh, and it's definitely not going to break for me this time because we're on camera. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to take a strip of this because it's what I need is one strip of this and because the top edge right here is fairly light and we want the top and we're up near the top on the pattern this is where we want to use this glass so we want to get some light coming through it now you can hear my score Like I said, it's probably not going to break right even for me, but that's all right because, you know, when you look at these sizes of these pieces that are in this window, it's not going to be very difficult. Sometimes you can tap it like this and follow that run, okay, and get it to come off. Now these glasses with these textures on them are so beautiful. That's why if it doesn't break right for me, I'm good with it because I know these glasses are very difficult to make. And when you have a deep texture in it like this, it's very difficult to anneal, okay? Very difficult. We're very lucky to be able to even cut this glass. And that's because the manufacturer, your Burroughs, they know what they're doing you know, and sometimes, you know what I found with these uh, textured glasses, these expensive textured glasses like the Euroboros, is that if you use a different angle glass cutter, like a, a wider angle glass cutter that you would cut heavier glass or thicker glass with, sometimes that works better. But the glass cutter that I use all the time is my preferred glass cutter it's in my pocket all the time we're gonna set this one off to the side just another quick peek at that beautiful glass right here from your burrows going in the live oak panel and we'll be showing you some of that glass because we've got a window in in the wind we've got a window in the window that has this glass in it and we're gonna show you exactly what it looks like with the light behind it so we're gonna set this one down on the floor We're done with that piece. Now we're going to come over. Now this is another beautiful glass by Kokomo. This glass here, we need a strip of it. So um, there's really no definite Everybody knows Kokomo glass is sweet to cut, right? I know it. You and me both. So we love Kokomo glass. It's sweet to cut. But we also love the expensive glass. Because the expensive glass is what makes your window, y'all. Not necessarily expensive. That, that's probably the wrong word. Glass that is unusual with textures and does certain just different things with light those are the glasses you want to try and use in your windows if you can and you don't have to use a lot of it use them as accents so i want to show you this look at the back of this glass okay this glass this particular glass this is a yakagani 
Yahagani. Anyway, let me show you the back. Th this you see in this window quite often as leaves, but I also want to show you the front. OMG, y'all. This is absolutely gorgeous. So on the back side, which is the side that you cut from, this is just, this ripple effect is just so, oh, it's just so awesome. Okay, so we're gonna pull down here and get another strip of this. Okay, Yakagani. Even with the texture, y'all, it's just barely, barely an eighth of an inch thick, okay? Great for working with number two lead or high heart lead. So we're gonna set this over here. Now, I've already stripped out this glass here. This is our cat's ball. This is a 48, let me tell y'all quick, just a quick story. This is a 48 GCP. It's a 48 green Kokomo glass granite cat's ball. And you can probably see the texture for the cat's paw. I don't know if you can or not. But anyway, this glass is very prevalent within the, the uh, oak tree project. So we have this one stripped out now. So let me grab another glass and just show you another glass because I'm ready to cut these windows out. So this is another Kokomo glass, okay? This is Kokomo 99. This is just a green and amber that is so gorgeous that I can't stand it. So, and because, because again, because we're near the top, we want to use some of the little bit lighter of this glass. And we all, we all love Kokomo glass. Okay. So there's that. So basically, you know what I'm doing is we're getting, we're getting approximately seven square feet of glass in four inch by 20 inch strips. And what that does, that gives us a little bit, you can, you can probably see that a little bit better now. Okay. So this is what you see without any light behind the oak tree project. So the, this glass, I know some of you are going to say, Ed, why in the world would you use that glass? Well, it goes in just like three or four little pieces in each window and it's just little areas that are beside other blues that are this is a like a new leaf green color and the blue you don't even notice it but I am gonna make sure that when I strip this out I'm not stripping out a bunch of blue with it and they're, they're very This is a very small strip, okay? So when we get it in the light, I don't know if that helps or not, Bart. But when you get it in the light, that blue really doesn't doesn't show up. However, when it does show up, it's it's the color of the medium blue that we're using around the outside edge of our window. So I'm not sure that we planned it that way, but this this glass is really pretty, but we only use a very small amount of it. Okay. So this is a textured glass here. This is a glass that's no longer available as well. Just like most of our glasses here in the oak tree project. This piece of glass here is an Armstrong and it's just really really pretty it has a beautiful texture and the thing about it um, it has it's like two shades darker that we have like six different shades of green in these windows and and as I look at the camera and I 
my peripheral vision is picking up the window that's in the window behind the camera. I see these shades of green uh, and I'm getting more and more inspired about the next finishing up the rest of these windows. So we're going to get a strip of this Armstrong. Okay, and you can see the texture right there. And you can see just how awesome this glass is. Okay. Hi everybody, it's Ed here. We're going to pretend for just a moment that this sheet of glass that is roughly 30 by 26 is a stained glass window. Now we've already soldered this side and now we need to flip it over so that we can solder the other side, okay? So here we go. We're going to take the window on the edge of the window and we're going to slide it out, okay? And just kind of walk your hand underneath of it. Don't pick it up. Don't let it drop. Once you get it out about halfway, maybe a little more than halfway, and the window's kind of laying on your hand in the, underneath and on your wrist. You want to pick it up just like that, okay? And now you have it vertical and the window is so 10 times stronger than it was laying flat, okay? So then what you want to do is come around, pick it up. Don't pick it up from the top because you're going to pull the lead away or the caming away. So then you want to just hold it and turn it and hold it and turn it just like that now if you see where I am on the table which is about a little less than halfway by the width of the glass okay and I'm holding my stained glass window up okay got my soldering iron we just finished soldering so what we're going to do is we're going to take it and hold it right here. And you don't want to drop this down. You want to let it down. And believe it or not, there's going to be a little pocket of air that's going to get trapped underneath of that and help you lay it down. And the bigger the window, the bigger the pocket. So we're going to hold it right here like this. We're going to take our hand, okay, turn it, turn it, put your hand on the window about right here. Same over here. We're going to let it down. Push it on the table with your wrists. Okay? While you're holding it up, just push it on the table. And y'all, you're ready to solder this side, and guess what? We didn't break anything. It's a great way to try it. If you're flipping windows by yourself, remember, y'all, please be careful. Always wear closed toed shoes. Armstrong glass, y'all. They knew what they were doing, and I hope they're going to reopen. But we'll see, you know. This glass is called shadow. <laughs> shadow. It kind of does create a shadow in the window, doesn't it, Mark? Okay, so this is another glass that we're using for the leaves. We need to take about a four and a half inch strip of this. And again, you can kind of see it here. And you can see it there, maybe. I don't know. Can you see that one? So we're going to take a strip of this, and I've only been taking short strips, you know, like this here. And this glass cut so beautiful, so beautiful, okay? So I just want you to see the texture on this glass. Any of the tree limbs that are in these top four sections of the window, this is the glass we'll be using, and this is the texture you'll see on the inside. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if this is helping you. Give us a thumbs up and don't forget, that's our favorite finger. We appreciate it.